Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we will be looking at the secret powers of the selection tool. Yes, the humble selection tool. It's the first tool in the main tool palette, and you may be wondering, why am I going to spend so much time talking about this humble little tool? Well, I estimate that I spend probably 75, 80% of my time <coughs> working in Finale with the selection tool. So um, if you know how to use it efficiently and wisely and powerfully, you can save seconds upon seconds upon seconds multiplied thousands of times. And believe me, it adds up. So master the selection tool and you will be well on your way to being a quick, efficient Finale user. Um, so a lot of this stuff is going to be pretty basic, and I'll just cover it as quickly as I can. Uh, starting with bar selection, I've got my uh, selection tool, my cursor, select a bar, easy enough. Shifts, if you hold down shift, you can select more, obviously. It's pretty common. There's a lasso that you can select partial bars in Finale, just like that, easy enough. Now, once you have a selection made, you can use the shift button with the arrow keys to extend that selection. And you'll see that right goes right, and then left will deselect things until it gets to one rhythmic value, and then turn around and go the other way. Easy enough. And then shift down, you'll be able to shift more uh, system staffs on the system. Uh, and if you're in the middle, obviously, shift up will we'll select more upwards. Easy stuff. To select the whole system, uh, all we need to do is just click to the left of any staff. I should have said to select the whole staff. You s s click to the left of the staff. And then you could do this <coughs> anywhere in the score. So it doesn't have to be on the first page. You know, page three, it'll select all of it. Easy enough. And then once you have the whole staff selected, incidentally, if you hold down shift and click some some other measure, it will uh, just select that bar through the end of the piece. So again, just click the whole thing, and I want to go from there to the end. And similarly, if we scroll down to the end and we hit select, it'll select from there to the beginning. Now, I figured out a few years ago that there's a tipping point, and I think in this file it's somewhere in page 3, so I have the whole staff selected. See, And from here it selects to the end, but if I go over here, it selects to the beginning. And one of these measures, I think it's this one and this one, yep, um, that's the tipping point. And I think Finale calculates that it wants to select whatever's 50% or more, so it will... Um, it will select the majority of the bars in uh, of that staff um, by doing that. And, you know, obviously you can do the same thing. If you hit shift down, you can select more, um, more staves that way. Uh, I want to talk about stack selection versus a normal selection. So this is a normal selection, and I will go ahead and, you know, you can see, you can, s ooh, you can select all kinds of bars this way. This is a normal selection. However, if you select the final measure, the, fi the final staff in this measure, you get a different type of highlight. Now you notice the, the blue highlight increase uh, goes up above the staff and in between the staffs, right? So that is a non-stack selected selection. And the shortcut is if you just double click, you'll get a stack selection. It'll and you can click anywhere, so it doesn't matter which bar. And of course you can uh, shift right or left to add more. And you'll notice that when you shift into partial measures like this, you, you don't get the stack selection anymore. So a stack selection only applies to full measures like that. Now there's some very important distinctions with a stack selection uh, f that Finale makes with stack selections. And I will get into some of them uh, in part two of this uh, tutorial. But the most important one, and I thought it, I'd put it up front, is that Deleting is different. I, I didn't cover this, but obviously if you select something and hit delete, it disappears, right? So if you do a non-stack selection, s I'm selecting these five staffs on this one bar and hit delete, they clear out easy enough. But if you're in a stack selection and you hit delete, the whole measure disappears. I mention this because if you're new to Finale, you can really get into trouble uh, this way. Just so just be aware of when things are not stack selected and when they're stack selected. And incidentally, the uh, the way to clear out the measures 
in a stack selection like sometimes you just want to clear out the whole the whole s uh, all the material in the, the whole bar um, on an extended keyboard over by the number pad if you hit the clear key it will clear out everything without actually deleting the bar and um, if you don't have a an extended keyboard function shift delete on a Mac laptop will do the same thing cool easy enough so that is uh, stack selection and uh, delete versus clear. Oh, did I miss anything? Da, 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 da. Okay, so let's look at the edit menu. Now this is pretty common. You have a lot of common, easy to use things. Uh, there's an undo, a, a redo. There's an undo, redo list, if you really want to get into that. <coughs> uh, select all, we'll do just that. It will select everything in the file. And select region, if you so desire, you can choose manually I suppose you know you can say tenor sax one bar th four through trumpet three bar six right and boom it selects those for you now I, it's kind of I, I don't know why you'd want to do that it's just as easy to do that and then press shift and select it's a lot quicker to do it that way but it is there if you want to use it that is the select region and then you have cut copy insert and paste which are pretty standard uh, computer functions that you should be familiar with uh, one thing I will tell you is that be aware of the insert function sometimes it doesn't work as well as you would expect so if I were to copy this bar here and insert it here that works fairly well it just moves everything over but when sometimes when you have stuff in it if I were to do this bar, it does it, but it doesn't really. There's, you know, the the chords don't get moved over. It does some weird stuff with the the hairpins here. Anyway, I almost never use insert, um, so I wouldn't recommend it. It's actually, uh, it's a little bit more useful if you have a stack selection. And incidentally, um, well, let me just cover this before I s before I get into that. Uh, a couple of other ways to copy and paste. Obviously, you know, Command C, Command V will do it. But if you have a selection made, all you have to do is hold down Option and click in the bar where you want it to go, and that will work with stack selections or not. Uh, and also, this will. Uh, there's another um, shortcut here. Uh, oh yeah. That's sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. Just dra you can do the same thing with a drag, and that'll be a copy and paste. And you can do multiple bars, etc., whatever you need to do. Um, there is a drag, copy, and insert function, too, which is sometimes kind of handy, particularly in a stack selection. So if you have a stack selection, you can drag it as normal, and it'll put it there. Or if you hold down Command and drag it, it will insert a bar. It will copy that bar and then insert another one. See, I just added a measure to this system. So that's kind of handy. That's that's a uh, command drag, basically. And that will work with on individual staves as well. But again, same caveat with the insert function. It doesn't always work too well in certain circumstances. Uh, so drag, copy to this uh, stack selection, copy, and paste. Yeah, there is some. There is something you should also be careful with, um, with stack selections. This is one of the main reasons why stack selection is different. Is because watch what I do here. I have this stack selected right here, copy, and I'm going to go into this measure nine over here, which I put in a different key, and paste it. <coughs> and you'll notice that uh oh, it changes the key back to the original key. All right. So if you were to do that, if you were to just copy, you know, the saxophones without stack selecting it here, copy that, paste here, it'll put it in that key. So uh, copying and pasting into a new key with a non-stack selection will go ahead and transpose the notes for you. However, if you stack select and copy and paste, <coughs> it'll you know revert back to the old key for you which is handy sometimes other times not it's just something to be aware of all right uh, a couple other things with the secret powers of this selection tool uh, you can basically select any element within the score and move it around that's pretty obvious easy uh, it's just notable to mention because you don't always have to go into the tool to move the 
appropriate item. You just drag it with the selection tool. Uh, you can also delete it that way too. If you hit delete, delete, and you just delete those items. So a lot of times you don't even need to go into some of these other tools to do some basic things. And that'll save you a lot of time going back and forth. Another thing that will save you a lot of time going back and forth between tools is that you can just double click from the selection tool any element and it will bring you to that tools uh, tool palette and or that elements tool and so you can do that with pretty much anything and to get back from any tool just hit escape so basically you can you know you can navigate around the tools in finale just by double clicking and escape double clicking and escape double clicking and escape and pretty much almost any element you know you can get in and out of the elements tools the escape function is so important to me that I have actually programmed the escape button as one of the programmable buttons on my Logitech mouse. So I don't even need to move my left hand or use my left hand. I just move around with my mouse, double click things, and hit the, the button on my mouse. So uh, like I said, I can you know navigate these tools down here pretty much without ever having to do this whole drag and then find it and the whole thing. It will save you a lot of time just knowing that. Cool? Um, <coughs> another basic function is the option click, or if you have a two button mouse, the right click will pull up contextual menus. And there's a lot you can do from these contextual menus. So please explore these. I mean, you know, this is, I'm just in the selection tool and I'm just right clicking a measure. And you can see there's all kinds of, well, here's some basic functions, but you can change the bar line. You know, you can actually go and change the key signature, the time signature. There's some staff style repeats. There's a lot of stuff that you can do without ever leaving the selection tool. B basic stuff that, you know, again, it's it's a second here, it's a second there, but it does add up. Uh, and interestingly, if you uh, right click or, or option click an element, it'll bring up a a contextual menu relative to that element's tool. So, you know, you'll see different different types of uh, contextual menus depending on what you right click. All right, which is a very handy handy thing to know and uh, once you get into finale it'll it'll become uh, it'll it'll save you a lot of time. Uh, last couple of things I covered that I covered that. Yes, uh, you know, other than that, you know, most everything from the utilities menu and the plugins are going to be launched from a, a selection of measures, and we will get into that at a later date. And then finally, I'm going to touch on the on two more tools within the main tool palette, if you can believe it. They're the, right next to the selection tool is the zoom tool and the hand grabber tool. And the zoom tool does just that. If you click the zoom tool, it will bring up a magnifying glass, and it will zoom in. If you hold down option, it will zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out. Voila, of course you can do the same thing with Command Plus and Command Minus, so that zoom tool is pretty useless. And the hand grabber tool, which literally just does this. It just moves things around. And that is the sole function of the hand grabber tool. Ironically, if you're in the selection tool, you can get to both of these tools with uh, key commands. So from the selection tool, do Command Shift gives you the magnifying glass, command option shift, zoom out, and the hand grabber tool I think is option option command to get the hand grabber tool right from the selection tool. So literally these two tools are useless. Don't ever drag your mouse down here. You've got you've got keys for it. And finale and make music if you're listening, please just eliminate the zoom tool and the hand grabber tool. There is absolutely no reason for them to still exist in the program. Um, and I think that's where I'm gonna leave it for now. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, or joining me, it's not us, thanks for joining me. And come back for the uh, second part of the secret powers of the selection tool. I'll do an intermediate lesson where we'll touch on some other uh, nifty things that you can do straight from the selection tool. All right, thanks and see you soon.